you having fun? Warming up my legs. Okay. Some well, squats. While you warm up your legs, why don't I give you some information that uh, I feel might help you out in the overall. Okay. In fact, uh, could have done this a bit earlier, but regardless. So, um, ammo types. There's many. They're good for different things. Switching back and forth between them, depending on what you're fighting, of course, is often handy, as we've talked about going for, like, stuff that works best against Geth versus stuff that works best against, you know, like, people or zombies or yeah. Krogans. It tends to change. But um, what does that mean precisely, right? Because sometimes you're kind of taking guesses based on description. So to be a little more explicit. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So of the ammo types, explosive ammo is really just good and will work to stop most things that you have a problem with. You're just getting a trade off in that um, they overheat much faster because they're explosive. Okay. Right? But they're fucking great. Um, so, you know, it, that's always a, a, a trade-off that you can you can take on if you'd like to in any situation. So, explosive? Does it say explosive? Is it um, like incendiary? It's a type. It's a type of uh, a type of uh, high explosive rounds. Okay, so, I don't think I have those. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, at least not for this. <coughs> Excuse me. You have most types. You're still missing one or two, like that one, for example. But I'm just going to give you these um, these categories sure. as, a, as a thing. Um, you also, I think you have radioactive rounds. Uh, I did see that somewhere, I think. Right here? Yeah. So radioactive rounds are particularly good at going up against people who are biotics or tech people. And it slows down their ability to do that more often. Tech people. Yeah. So if you're fighting uh, an Asari, if you're fighting, um, you know, um, anyone who's, again, more about their their Jedi space powers and abilities, um, that is going to be uh, handy for helping disable that. Okay. Right? Yeah, sure. Um, very incidental, but that's what that's for. Uh, if you're fighting against... Um, a Krogan who can regenerate their health. They have smaller shields, but they have big health bars and those, and they regenerate over time. Yeah. Um, you can fight against that using incendiary or inferno rounds. So inferno types of, uh, like it's another, another category that, you know, you, yeah. You okay. Know, I just like, to but you do have incendiary. Yeah. Um, and that is, uh, the third, yeah, the thermite damage there is going to compensate for the fact that they regen otherwise. Okay. So you have, uh, uh, I see nice big fiery rounds to light them up. So that's what you should be associating the the incendiary rounds with with Krogans. Um, if you are uh, looking to just pierce shields, you've got Fasic and Proton rounds, right? Okay, and these are going to like do massive uh, uh, shield bypass, um, but. The idea being that, like, if that's what you're doing, then someone on your team should be doing the high DPS, yeah, and they can do the do, do the health bar damage as well. So it's an it's more of a a assist to be like you 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 wipe shields out, and then they can do the do the damage. But um, phasic, excuse me. Um, either way, that's the intention of that type of round. Okay. Um, when it comes to stopping organic things, people or zombos, uh, you know, uh, whatever the, the, the um, uh, uh, <laughs> what the fuck, uh, uh, colonists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's say sure. there are 16 colonists that are wiling out <laughs> and you need to stop them. Okay. And you happen to be out of grenades. Um, anti-personnel rounds or shredder rounds would be excellent for that. Okay, right? It would it would hurt, right? Big hurt hurt people big. I see. <laughs> Shred. <laughs> Rip tear. Yeah. Anti-personnel until it's done. Yeah. Okay. Um Huh. 
Uh-huh. What else? Sorry, give me a second. Okay, all good. In the meantime... Okay, yeah, no, for a second, I, I thought someone was saying, dude, it's the complete opposite, but uh, no, that's not the case. All right, um, then you have lots of, now you have lots of, like, cold shit, so you got, like, cryo rounds and such. Yeah. Um, the main thing about cry cryo rounds is that it um, causes enemies' accuracy to drop. So it's not so much about the damage it's going to do, it's not so much about the, the shield, it's more so just it's general but it'll cause them to do less uh, accurate shots. Okay, yeah. So it's a bit, it's like a debuff ammo. You know? They kind of freeze up. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. I can see the numbers here too as well. Yep. Um, if you got toxic ammo in the form of like, I guess, I think like chemical rounds, you probably have, you know, some, some chemical rounds. Yeah, so... Um, For the toxic stuff. Yeah, so like... Not super useful, but these are also good for, for um, enemies that can heal themselves. Because you basically have to, like, compensate with the with the toxicity, yeah. you know? Um, so, uh, that's kind of what those are for. And again, if you, you know, I'm, I'm just dropping these so that you kind of internalize that a little bit to some degree. But it's a, it's a, it's a lot in a list, so if you, you know, yeah. forget and whatever, that's okay. So don't worry like about it. right now, I feel like I can. I've been going through the game, and I gave some rounds here and there, and uh, I didn't feel like I was like, oh, I need to change the rounds right now to yeah. deal with this particular enemy. No. I was still able to progress. I feel as but if it's gonna help if I use the proper rounds. Right? It, it will help if you use the proper rounds, and it'll help just knowing what the fuck they're for. Certainly, yeah, you know, um, especially like if you are switching between. Anti Geth, anti Krogan, yes. anti personnel. At least you know, on the top level. Those least. are what you've you've been shooting a lot of those three types of things. So those are those are what you know yeah. not bad to, to be aware of. Um, the other thing you can do is if you wanna just knock Krogans down, for example, that's where um, high impact ammo comes into play. So hammerhead rounds uh, or sledgehammer rounds, which I don't know. I saw hammer, hammerhead shotguns, somewhere. perhaps. Right here. Yeah, there you go. So that's more about just like knockdown. Okay. You know, um, and then while they're on the ground, you can do more damage while they're you know disabled for a bit. Um, so that's that's kind of the goal. So you can you can go that way too with with that that type of thing. Um, and then in terms of armor piercing, so the the uh, the Geth stuff, the anti. Um, anti-synthetic uh, tungsten and armor piercing rounds. Tungsten and armor piercing. Are the types of ammo that you want to use against them. Right here. Yeah. So, um, that's a lot of info, but again, the majority of what you're dealing with are geth, uh, so in which case you grab your tungstens, uh, you're dealing with krogans, so your incendiaries is good for that, and um, if you're ever shooting a human, you know, you can switch to anti-personnel, or if you ever switch, a, or if you're sh getting um, getting biotic, then radioactive. Okay, it's like a just a broad, yeah, yeah, yeah surface know, level, top level, a broad thing. Yeah. Okay, so I just because like yeah, that, that's it's a bunch of ammo types, and they give you your descriptions. But in terms of like applying that to in-game combat, that's that's what you're um, that should be helpful. Okay, cool. Thanks for the heads up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when last you left off, you, I believe, you took care of uh, <laughs> Pharos. We helped Pharos. Pharos, and they're they're good now. All right. Now that does leave Novaria, uh, but you should probably talk to the people. Exactly. All right. Go get some some big old relationship points. Yes. Salute. Salute again. Do it again. No, you're done. Psst. No respect, I tell you. I mean, I think the protocol is like upon like. Okay, if you're a dictator, then you're the type that's like, you salute me until I leave. <laughs> and if I peek back in the door, you should still yeah. be saluting. <laughs> if you're M. Bison, then fine. That's what you do. But normal military, maybe not so much. Yes, Commander. Still the same stuff. 
unless he has new. Speak freely, Presley. I, I trust you, them. Commander. Nah. If you think they belong. All right. Carry on, Presley. Yes, sir. Do your job. Uh huh. And then some people here. So we'll see Joker. What up, gangsta? Uh, hey, Commander, next time we touch down, let's try not to park the ship in a colony of mutant zombies. Just thinking out loud here. That's fair. Uh. How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? Well, she's the best ship in the fleet. Balance Man, is what you I wish that the there would be more lines with people. For your <laughs> so, Joker commander. doesn't... You, he updates I'm a bit with that average. little intro line, but he doesn't seem to, like... Get a ton. Yeah. The crew crew are the people that you mainly to wanna right, get stuff you. from. But he gives you a little bit of flavor. So it's worth looking in on him. Just for that that little bit. Alright. Doo doo. Uh huh. Hey, it's the boy. It's fight on. <laughs> Fighting. Anything you need, Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? I'm glad there aren't many aliens like the Thorian. I don't think my stomach could take it. One of my cousins has an agribusiness. I was thinking of calling him. Maybe he can get some shipments into Pharaohs. I mean, now that they're cut off from the company. Okay. What's your opinion on the last mission? I'm glad oh, they're on I mean, now that right they're here. cut off from the company. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? Well, they know about the stonewalling you've had from the council. What kind of stonewalling? What does that mean? Uh, like, like, like shutting you down, shutting you down. barricades, the okay. hurdles. I see. They deserve to know what we're up against. They're on your side. They're pissed about the resistance we're getting, especially from our side. I'll have a better handle on all of it when my head stops hurting. Another L2 flare up. Damn. Are you okay? Anything I can do? No, Commander, it'll settle down. It's rough sometimes, but they spike higher than a lot of L3s. Except for you, of course. Besides, I fared a lot better than some after Kinetics was through. I haven't heard anything about Kinetics in a while. Yeah, they quietly disappeared. Broke up into a bunch of little corps after they botched the training on Jump Zero. After first contact, Kinetics was set up to track Element Zero exposures and develop implants for humans. Once we had an embassy on the Citadel, Kinetics could bring in experts instead of taking it slow. Is there some reason we couldn't learn it on our own? They didn't know where to start. Hell, it took a couple of years to even link biotics and ESO. Forget trying to get the kids to move stuff. They had trouble just helping them not break their own. Holy crap. Christ. And their choice of teachers. <sighs> <laughs> oh, man. There are a few broken bones, huh? I mean, if you're not bending a spoon, you might be bending your fucking thumb. <laughs> the only experts would have to be aliens. Dead on. Turians, actually. That's why Kinetics kept it a secret. They were afraid of what people back home would think, asking the Turians for help when we just fought a war with them. The Asari would have been more acceptable than the Turians. Yes, but the company didn't go through the Citadel. It would have made Earth look weak, so they discreetly hired some Turian mercenaries. Okay. Get your knuckles wrapped a few times, Lieutenant? Yeah, you could say that. Our instructor was a Turian by the name of Commander Vernus. A real hard ass. He basically had a free pass to break us if it would turn out a decent biotic. Oh. Mm -hmm. Kind of spiraled from there, Commander. Did he ever face charges for that? He got hit. <coughs> but like everything else at Jump Zero, it was under the table. The less said, the better. Anyway. This is ancient stuff. I walked it off a long time. Internal investigations. Back to my duties, Commander. We're here to make history, not rehash it. Cool. Yep. You're a wizard, Harry. 
If we have to break and bend you to get a wizard out of you, we'll get one. <laughs> but by God, before you leave, you'll be a fucking wizard. <laughs> I'm a what? <laughs> we'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander? What? All right, all right, all right. Oh yeah, there's nothing here. There should really be something there. Fellas? Poor L2s. Can't upgrade, huh? Hey! What's up, Garrus? Commander, good to see you. You've been with CSEC a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but... Yeah, I've seen some interesting things. I'll bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit... disturbing. What happened? Why were you investigating them? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless, nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts. Oh. Organs, mostly. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab, or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. You've seen this before on the Citadel? Every so often, some lab sells unwanted parts through the black market. But they're not as bad as the psychos. I remember this one Elcor diplomat we caught in my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs. Had the station in a bit of a panic. Wow, jeez. But this case wasn't that clear cut. Turns out there was more going on than we first realized. Jeez. Elcor chopping meat? Gleefully. Sit still, human. <laughs> Your organs will be used for greater things. <laughs> Sadistically. Worry not. All will be fine. <laughs> and if you move too much, are you gonna ruin the harvest? It's gonna get mad at you? That's crazy. So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. So I went to his lab, hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development. But there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. Krogan testicles. I mean, that can't be worth much nowadays, does it? You'd be surprised. They're a delicacy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> In certain parts. Might as well rehash that. Okay. You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? <laughs> Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their Clip. virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. There you go. Four balls. Four. Somebody's making a killing out there. Do the math, says the game. <laughs> Just quickly, very subtly, does the math right there. Got the quads going. No need to linger on the point. Shout out to Jojolion. Man, that sucks. Four of them and they don't work. Four. What did you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. Uh... You mean threatened? Was that really necessary? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it paid off. One of my detainees started bleeding <laughs> profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up, and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body, some of them fresh. That was our big break. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees. They were test tubes. Walking, living test tubes. Hmm. So he was growing spare parts in his own employees. Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold oh. them off. Most of the victims were poor. He 
pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Most of them were a mess, but only on the inside, hidden so nobody could see it. What a bastard. Yep. I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. What? Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. Space is too big. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop him. Damn. But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down, but CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. Really? They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties if the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. Fair enough. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. We just used them to make more organs, but they wouldn't listen. The Cop Time Story Hour with Garrus! <laughs> Giving us all the details. Fun times! Declassified, right? SVU! <laughs> Back after these messages! Well, it's not worth the risk. You pursue the vessel and disable it. That's the best choice. They sent the military after him, but he got away just the same. Yes, they did. I went to Pathan and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He said if I didn't like it, I could quit. Well, I almost did. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. That is a tough choice. Disco Elysium voice <laughs> burrows into your brain as you highlight the middle option. The moral in turn is pleased. <laughs> Incremental progress! Yeah! Yeah, he might do it to other people, though. A few casualties is a small price to pay to stop someone like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those hostages might be wishing they'd died by now anyway. Just wish I could have stopped him. That's all. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salion? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart, his idea of a joke, I guess. I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. Oh. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Salion, I'm gonna be there when you find him. All right, there you go. Journal updated. Thanks a lot. Codex Commander, updated. Good to see you. Just go, cool. go over to Krogan's and just scratch out two <laughs> and write four. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Turian's biology. The Turian homeworld, Palavin, has a metal poor core generating a weak magnetic field and allowing more solar radiation into the atmosphere. To deal with this, most forms of life on Paladin evolved some form of metallic exoskeleton to protect themselves. Their reflective plate-like skin makes Turians less susceptible to long-term, low-level radiation exposure, but they do not possess any sort of natural armor. A Turian's thick skin does not stop projectiles and directed energy bolts. Although life on Palavan is carbon-based and oxygen-breathing, it is built on dextro-amino acids. This places the Turians in a distinct minority on the galactic stage. The Quarians are the only other known sapient dextroprotein race, the food of humans, Asari or Salarians, who evolved in level amino acid based biospheres, will at best pass through Turian systems without providing any nutri nutrition. At worst, it will trigger an allergic reaction that can be fatal if not immediately treated. Your food sucks. Says the Turians. Garbage. Absolute trash. Alright. That's about it. Journal. Garrus find Dr. Salian. Head to the coordinates in the Herschel system. In the Kepler Verge. Alright. Well, it was nice talking to you. There you go. You got uh, you got a little side quest out of it. Four balls, four, four of them. 
Lots of fun to be had all around. Oh, before I go, you said you're serving with Commander Shepard now? We saw him on the news here. He's cute. Later, sis. Tell me you didn't hear that. <laughs> That's unprofessional. <laughs> you know, I'll allow it. <laughs> That's fine. Afraid I did. Oh, shoot me now. One of my sisters. That's Sarah, the youngest. Surprised to see you here, sir. Thought you'd be chatting up, what's her name? To Sony? I'm sorry, what? I don't see how my personal life is any of your business, Chief. It's not. I just thought we were getting along pretty well, sir. I don't want to close doors, you know? <laughs> <laughs> open, open office policy. <laughs> open door policy. We are. I'd like that to continue. Hmm. All right. But I'm the jealous type commander. Just so you know. What's up? You didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. Hmm. Tell me about your family. That felt very cut and inserted to the beginning of that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With dad on duty so much, I had to help mom raise them. Tell me about your daddy. Did your father serve with the fleet? Yeah, took any crap posting he could get that offered space time. You know what? He worked his ass off trying to get recognized, but he never made it above serviceman third class. Hmm. He was real proud when I made chief. First thing he did was salute. Hmm. So I guess he wasn't around. What about mom? What about your mother? You haven't mentioned her. You must know what military wives are like. Strong because they have to be able to raise kids while dad's away on a six month cruise. She has a degree in planetary geology. She and dad both wanted to see new worlds. She gave up her career to raise us, though. Damn. Okay. And your sister thinks I'm cute? You have more than one sister? Sounds like a big family. Yeah, I'm the oldest, then Abby, then Lynn. Sarah's the youngest. She's still in high school. Oh. With four girls, dad used to say he felt more outnumbered at home than on maneuvers. Which sister called earlier? Uh, didn't she say, uh, Sa Sarah? Or... You have more than yeah, one sister. Yeah, I'm the oldest, then Abby, then Lynn. Sarah's All right, the then. With four girls, Dad Nothing used to there, say there. he felt more outnumbered at home <laughs> than on maneuvers. Tell me about your home. Where did you grow up? All over. Same as you, I expect. We transferred a half a dozen times before I finished grade school. You go where personnel command sends you, right? I guess that's why I'm so tight with my sisters. We'd have to leave all our friends every two or three years. Mm. See, kids raising kids. Next, you'll tell me you all ran across green fields singing show tunes. <laughs> Don't knock show tunes. I might have to take exception. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Your dad was gone a lot. Sounds like your father wasn't around much. Wasn't your family stationed near him? Dad always wanted to serve in space, but he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I've enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. FF6 Opera. <laughs> I, I, I didn't realize your precious time was being wasted. <laughs> That was a whole lot of nothing for no reason. Let's wow. Be fair. Let's be fair. Wow. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear you reciting poetry. Just because I can drill you between the eyes at 100 meters doesn't mean I can't like sensitive stuff. Just don't spread it around. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. All right, I'm not going to shit on, on, on that. Okay. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. 
dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching, though. So behave. You mean from wherever we go after death? Dead on, Skipper. He's with God now. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? <laughs> don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> of course not. Not my place to judge. Are you a fanatic? That's a fair question. How, how hardcore are you about this, this God fella? You know? That depends on whether you have a problem with people oh, great game. who don't believe in God. Commander, I'm not some kind of zealot. I believe in God. What everyone else believes is their business. I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. What's your opinion on the last mission? Gotta admire those colonials. That's about the worst place for a colony I've ever seen. Given the option, I'd get the hell out of Dodge. What's your opinion on the last mission? Gotta admire those colonials. Same thing. Given All right. the option, I'd get the hell out of Dodge. We'll talk later, Williams. That Looking might have been a little, uh... Cassie. Yeah? <laughs> Man. Alright. Codex. God is an ancient religious... <laughs> Before the gateways opened, humans believe... <laughs> Fucking hell. Amazingly, for some reason... <laughs> Silly, I know. <laughs> In the codex. <laughs> Wikipedia, no emotions, okay? No emotions. Hey. Hey. <laughs> no stances. VI, come on now. <laughs> Chill. Military doctrine. Um, yes, the Alliance military is of great concern to the galaxy. At first contact with the Turians, they were completely inexperienced. Turian disdain changed to respect after the relief of Shang-Chi, where the humans surprised them with novel technologies and tactics. The human devotion to understanding and adapting to modern space warfare stunned the state council races. For hundreds of years, they had lived behind secure walls of long-proven technologies and tactics. The Council regards the Alliance as a sleeping giant. Less than three percent of human volunteers to serve. Oh, less of three. Less than three percent of humans volunteer to serve in their military. A lower proportion than any other species. While competent Alliance soldiers are neither as professional as the Turians nor as skilled as the Osari. Uh, their strength lie in fire support, flexibility, and speed. They make up for a lack of numbers with sophisticated technical support, VIs, drones, artillery, electronic warfare, and emphasis on mobility and individual initiative. Their doctrine is not based on absorbing and dishing out heavy shocks like the Turians and Krogan. Rather, they bypass enemy strong points and launch deep into their rear, cutting supply lines and destroying HQs and support units, leaving enemies to wither on the vine. On defense, the human military is a rapid reaction force that lives by Sun Tzu's maxim. He who tries to defend everything defends nothing. Garrisons are intended for scouting rather than combat, avoiding engagement to observe and report on invaders using drones. The token garrisons of human colonies make it easy for alien powers to secure them, for which the Alliance media criticizes the military. However, the powerful fleets stationed at phase gate nexuses such as Arcturus are just a few hours or days from any colony within their sphere of responsibility. In the event of an attack, they respond with overwhelming force. You know something that's uh, just thinking about this setting and, and a lot of other like fantasy settings, we tend to put humans in the middle of the scale, you know, in terms of like combat and like balance of like aggression and strength versus weakness and you know and so things like that and when you have like a, a bunch of other races designed we tend to like you know whether you have elves and orcs and then like you've got like the the in-between human or whether you've got uh, yeah. giant krogans and turians on one side and then i guess like salarians and volus you know on the other and then things like that we tend to we tend to design ourselves right in the middle yeah. Commander. So we'll talk later, Williams. Looking uh, forward to it, Skipper. That's that's that's, Skipper? that's Ashley. Skipper. Skipper. As in 
like on a ship. Oh, okay. That you know, kind of skipper. You know, like the slang skipper, like as in like old white boy yeah. fucking thing, <laughs> is actually reference to like a skipper on a boat. It's like I didn't your, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, skip. It's, yeah. Okay. Precisely. Nice. So it's boat slang. It's not what just do you like. Want, Shepard? Do I can country club talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like sport. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. Such as? Such as, I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war. But the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared, one of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up, <laughs> to stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding at least for one generation. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. I take it the warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes, a meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. We met at the Hollows, near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from, and where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. It sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well, there are some laws that even we hold sacred. Oh. Jared was your father? He was. Oh. Until that day, we talked, but we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life, but not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. Damn. Mm. That is why I left. And that's why I'll never go back. You want to talk to Rex? Damn. We'll talk. Rex is bad. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Uh, so you dealt with your daddy issues. Real as fuck. Tell me about the extinction. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. Have you seen this? I think you did this, yeah. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. You must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? You're trying to make me cry, Shepard. <laughs> I've got some unfinished business with my family. But that's all. What kind of business? <sighs> Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. I swore to recover my family's battle armor. It was taken from him after the uprising. What's so important about this armor? It's a relic. Useless, really. 
but it was worn by five generations of my family before the war. It's rightfully mine. Originally, it was taken by the Turian military. We weren't allowed armor or weapons after the war. Oh. Now, it's in the hands of Ton Actus, a Turian scum who collects relics from the war. He's made millions selling Krogan artifacts that were stolen from my people. He's got several bases where he stores his goods, all fortified and guarded. I just don't know which base has my family's armor. Damn, that doesn't belong in a museum, though. I guess I will look for it. Just tell me where to start looking. I'll upload the data to your nav system. But, Commander, I want to be there when oh. you find him. Okay. What can you really? tell me? Yeah, he did just yeah. Ask them. All I know, Right. every Krogan is infected. Everyone. And no one's rushing to find a cure. So long, Rex. Shepherd. Shepherd. <laughs> so bad. So Rex. Four? <laughs> Four. <laughs> Have all of them dropped? So long, Shepherd. <laughs> Come on, just whatever. Shepherd. <laughs> Get away from me. Shepherd. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, we'll go see the shop after. <laughs> Alright. Tali! Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Good to see you smiling again. So to speak. <laughs> I'm sleeping much better now. I guess I'm getting used to how quiet your ship is. I still think a lot about my pilgrimage, though. I know Steren's our top priority, but with all the worlds we go to, I was hoping to find something to bring back to the flotilla. We've still got a long way to go. You'll find something to take back. Yes, but it cannot just be some derelict ship my people can use for salvage. It has to be more than that. There's a lot expected of me. What's so special about you? It's my father. He's the senior member of the Admiralty Board. He's one of only five people who can overrule the decisions of the Conclave for the good of the migrant fleet. My father is responsible for the lives of 17 million people. Our entire race is in his hands, and I'm his only child. Yeah. How about here? What do we got in this box here? Got a, some paper clips, copy of Madden 64, <laughs> a rumble pack. Hey! Oh hey, my god. A rumble pack. <laughs> That's worth Come on. Yeah. <laughs> my Griffey's gonna love a fucking rumble pack, bro. So are you some kind of heir to the Quarian throne or something? No, it doesn't work that way. My father's position isn't hereditary. I'll probably never serve on the Admiralty board myself. Officially, I'm just the same as any other citizen. But it doesn't work that way in practice. People have always treated me differently because of who my father is. You must get all kinds of special privileges. I probably had it easier than most growing up, but it's not all good. People like my father have enemies, and they're not above using me to get to him. Oh. It must be tough on you. My people place a high value on family and ancestry. There's an unspoken expectation that I'll live up to my father's example. Everyone's waiting for me to do something great on my pilgrimage. Something that will forever change our lives for the better. If I don't, it's like I failed. And that reflects badly on both me and my father. Hmm. Hello? Uh-oh. Controller? Can you pause? Ah, oh, shit. Hold on. What's going on? All right, the mouse is good. Stick is still no good. Yeah, and I still have battery, seemingly. Uh, uh, let's do a controller off, controller on. Eh, there we go. Oh boy, okay, cool, we're back. So what? Blame it, Origin. <laughs> Literally just Blame yeah, Origin. it's probably Origin. Uh, what if we save the galaxy? The work you're doing here is more important than anything any Quarian has ever done before. Yes, I know. 
But you have to understand Quarian culture. We're a very insular society. The events beyond the flotilla don't much matter to the average citizen. Our greatest dream is that one day, we'll return to our homeworld and drive out the Geth. But even if we stop Seren, that's not going to happen. There's still millions of Geth behind the veil. Oh. Until they're gone, our exile will continue. Millions. What would you need to bring back to make everyone happy? Something that would help us better understand the Geth. They've changed significantly since the exile. They've continued to evolve. We've done our best to study them, but it's not easy. They're very reclusive. Until recently, they never went beyond the borders of the Vale. And all the Geth we run into now are under Seren's control. We'd need to find Geth operating on their own, independently. But I don't want this to get in the way of our mission, Shepard. First, we stop Seren. Then I'll worry about my own problems. Okay. Uh, Tali's father. What was your father like? It wasn't easy growing up as the daughter of one of the Admiralty. Even before he joined the board, he was a prominent figure. People looked to him for leadership. He had to set an example, and he expected the same of his daughter. Plus, he was pretty strict, a military man through and through. He never allowed me to settle for anything less than excellence. As a kid, I sometimes felt like he was pushing me too hard. But now, I'm old enough to appreciate what he taught me. The world doesn't owe us anything. If we want something in life, we have to earn it. Sounds like a tough upbringing. You don't resent your father at all? Like I said, it wasn't easy. My father's not the kind of person you bond with. And he wasn't around all that much. Too busy. Mm. People counted on him, and he took his duties seriously. Even when he was around, he always seemed a bit distant. Like his mind was always somewhere else. Come to think of it, I can't ever remember seeing him smile. Not once. Whoa. It's like he was always weighed down by all that responsibility. I mean, I know he cares about me, but he never really showed it. Not in the usual way. I guess the best thing I can say about my father is that I respect him. Did, did you try taking the mask off? To see if you... <laughs> no. no. I tried that. Did you press L2 on the inventory <laughs> screen? Mother was around, but she always seemed to kind of blend into the background. Almost like she was overshadowed by my father. He tends to do that to people. She passed on about five years ago. Some airborne virus that swept through the fleet. Happens sometimes oh. when filters start to break down. I think my father took it pretty hard. After she was gone, he became even more focused oh. on his work. I think that was his way of dealing with the grief. Yeah, obviously. Oh, that sucks. I want to talk about something else. Like what? No, we, we, we had all that. I think we're done. I should go. See you later. Code accepted. Take care. Daddy issues are something that the entire fleet yeah. appears to be. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of easy. It's kind of easy. Well, I'm there for you if you need me. <laughs> the crew of the Normandy appear to be entirely be afflicted with daddy issues. And I thought daddy wasn't the rank. <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> Codex updated. <laughs> Dog Council races. You wanna take this one?